Welcome to Eyes Open. Today is January 9th, 2019. I'm Eric Smith, and on this show I interview Julie Rowe, who is a gifted woman who has unique visionary insights. Um, she has gifts of sound, and she can hear things, and she has understanding that comes from ancestors and other beings on the other side of the veil who talk to her. And we like to interview her so that she can give us another perspective on current events that are going on. One of those current events right now is the Chad Daybell story, who Julie and I both know, and we'd like to share another angle of things. In our last episode, Julie, we had a a, a very, I guess you could say that that episode was intended to balance the huge media storm that was going um, where we were only getting one side of the story and our intent I feel was to just to bring another side to the story um, and in in doing so we may have been slightly imbalanced ourselves and so the purpose I think of this podcast is to tell a, a more complete um, story of what you see what you feel what you hear concerning the Chad Daybell story and so that's really all I have right now I'm gonna turn it to you and just let the energy go where it goes, hoping that you can catch us up on some of the more recent details that have come out from media, and just let us know what you've heard, what you've seen, and what you understand. Okay. Well, um, I haven't read everything that's out there on uh, in media. I've had, um, I don't know, a dozen different things sent to me. I've had a lot of media contacts want to interview me. Um, I have done some interviews, most of them... Um, well, I think two, Fox 13 and KSL did, you know, 30 to 40 minute interviews and you saw what they did there, some of you. Um, Inside Edition and People Magazine and some others have tried to contact me. I'm just waiting to hear more from them and to decide who I'm going to interview with at what point in time. I do see some of that as possibly come down the line and, and here's why. Um, first of all, let me explain a little bit about the, the gifts because there's a misunderstanding um, there, I think. Um, I had, I've had six near-death experiences and lots of out-of-bodies. I came to this planet with the ability to see, hear, feel, and um, understand the other side of the veil. I guess you could say um, uh, several spiritual gifts that I'm not going to get into. All of those right now. Um, everything from being able to see spirits on the other side of the veil or or hear them, whether they are of the light or the dark or anything in between. That continues on. It's only um, been amplified since my near-death experience. The first one I had was in 2004. Chad Daybell was my publisher for that book. In February of 2014, Chad Daybell contacted me off of a prepper site. Um, I was typing about my dreams and visions. Um, at that point, had not had just barely started to tell people that I actually had a near-death experience was kind of testing the waters because um, having grown up with these gifts and then having these experiences, I had a lot of fear energy about sharing them with people, as you can imagine. And the adversary telling me my whole life, if I told people what I saw or experienced, that people would just write me off as a crazy lady. So um, where I am now is that I have no fear about sharing my gifts. I'm very careful with um, what, what I say, when I say it, how I say it, and who I say it to. And that is definitely a strategy that's being used by the light side as in spiritual warfare, both the light and the dark. Use strategy. What I see with this Chad Daybell situation is um, a lot of convoluted energy, a lot of messy energy. I'm going to break it down for you guys a little bit the best that we can. There are a lot of voices coming at us in the media and um, and a lot of voices coming at people, you know, from the other side of the veil, whether they be of light or dark. You can have an unclean spirit, a demon, or a light spirit, and there's varying degrees of, I guess you could say, um, light and dark in all of us. And uh, so I'm going to throw out some ideas to you guys, some things that I've heard from the other side of the veil in the last several weeks, actually leading up to Chad Daybell and Tammy Daybell and, and Tammy's passing. Now, Tammy Daybell is a good friend of mine. I say is because I still communicate with her on the other side of the veil. She is Ta uh, Tad's first wife. 
they were married a long time. And um, I have I visited their home in Springville, Utah a few times, I think two or three times, maybe more than that. And in Rexburg, Idaho area, dozens of times. I'm, I was close friends with Tammy and Chad and all five of their kids. So... Julie, um, Julie, can I just pause you? Just since it's nagging at me, I think your quest, your listeners are going to wonder what you mean. You have regular communication with Tammy. What does that look like? Yes. So Tammy Daybell passed away. The the um, 911 call that Chad made, he made it early in the morning around 6, and the medical examiner thought that the time of death was about 2 in the morning for, Ted, for Tammy Daybell on October 19th. I received a message um, from the head of my security team after I had taught a two-hour energy class in San Diego, letting me know that Tammy Daybell had passed away, that Chad's oldest daughter, Emma, had called um, one of my friends who had gotten a hold of my head of security to notify us that this had happened. Now, I will go on record for saying that the first time that this, the spirit, the angels on the other side of the veil, let me know that Tammy was going to pass away was in uh, July of 2015, or excuse me, June of 2015. And um, I'm not going to go into that other than say, and I did not say anything to chat about this. And I did not know how she was going to pass away. I could just see into the future and I could see um, some things coming. I, I see stuff like that all the time with people. Um, it's not an uncommon thing for me. And so I kept it to myself. I didn't say anything about it. And um, so it's of no surprise to me that Tammy passed away. I've seen this coming for a long time. And um, there came a point in time, oh, three years ago, two, probably two years ago, that Chad came to me. Now, Chad has some of his own spiritual gifts. He is also visionary. Um, I would, I don't say this in a bragging way, but my gifts are more extensive than his. And so there were times when he often that he would run things by me to see what I was seeing or what I was understanding. Um, he's had a couple of near-death experiences, so his veil, he, he describes his veil as being kind of ripped. It's, it's open. I see that with a lot of people. Um, there's lots of reasons why that can happen. In his case, uh, you know, he has some books and stuff about, about his experiences. That's one of the ways that Chad was able to know that I was speaking the truth when he found me on the online website and recognized my story because he had experienced similar things, not identical. And we had both been shown some possibility of things coming in the future. And so he found me and he, as an author and publisher, wanted to publish my story. So I started working with Chad um, in February of 2015, or excuse me, 2014. And my first book came out in May of 2014 before I ever even met Chad in person. I met Chad and Tammy and four of their children in Utah in July of 2014 after my first book came about and after we started writing the second book. My second book came out in October 14. So when I talk about these gifts, I say I'm in communication with Tammy and her spirit because I see her on the other side of the veil. She is happy. She is healthy. She's, she is going about the Lord's work. She's in a good place. She, um, she completed her life's work and she graduated from, from mortality. I call it graduation because literally, like, Earth is a school, and we learn things in mortality, and then it's just part of our eternal progression. And so when somebody graduates from mortality, this is a good thing. They get to move on, you know, to the next phase. Okay, phase Julie, so again, the question is, how? what does this look like when you communicate with her? Are you sitting in your bed at night, and she comes in the room, and she's talking to you? What does this look like? Help your, understand, um, your listeners understand. Last night, I'm in a hotel room, and I'm talking to my angels about the podcast I'm going to do today. I want to make sure that I'm clear. I want to make sure that I'm saying what needs to be said. I want to make sure that I'm seeing things and hearing things correctly. And I run it by my light angels. And I basically, I talk to the Lord. I pray to the Lord and I ask him, Lord, what would you have me say? And then different messengers will come. And Tammy was one of those. And she talked to me. She actually helped calm. Let me get emotional. She actually helped calm me down because this is a highly emotional circumstance for me. Chad and Tammy are good friends. Um, it breaks my heart to see some of the things going on right now. 
I love their children with all of my heart. And, um, and I have my own opinions about things and then I have my own understandings. I want to explain when she comes, sometimes I, um, can actually see her spirit, but generally speaking, I see it in my mind's eye and I hear it usually coming through my right ear in thought energy. It will actually, the energy will actually come through in, into, um, and so when I say I'm hearing voices, I'm not, I have heard spirit voices as if I'm talking to you right now, but usually it's thought energy that comes in. Okay, let's move on. So what's one of the next messages in your in your story here? Things that you've seen lately concerning this whole well, event? First, I want people to understand very clearly that Tammy's happy and she's in a good place. Okay. Second, I want to make it very clear that those two kids are safe and they are having fun <laughs> and I think that's interesting I see them and I've been debating for weeks whether or not I debated before on the on the first podcast how much I was allowed to say and they said don't say it and uh, yesterday I heard just say it and I I will admit that I have fear energy um, that I'm clearing out related to Chad Daybell I in no way want to betray his trust at the same time I have a greater mission to perform, and my mission, first and foremost, is to warn people on this planet of anything I see that's dark, of anything I see that's not okay going on on this planet. Regardless and of who that comes from, even if it's your friends? Regardless of who that comes from, mm -hmm. yes. Regardless of who that comes from, whether it comes from my friends or from somebody of my friends that they're associated with, and I see darkness uh, surrounding this whole case. I see darkness related to the FBI. I see darkness related to the media. I see darkness related to the police department. I see darkness related to Lori Vallow. I see darkness related to Chad. I see Lori, I see darkness related to Charles Vallow. I see darkness related to Lori Vallow's estranged husband's family members that are trying to um, work with the media and police department to bring some kind of case forward. Okay. It's convoluted and it's messy. So last time we talked, you had a little bit different message, and it was more like along the lines of Chad is innocent, everything's okay, he didn't do anything wrong. Okay. So has your story changed? Well, let me let me clarify that. I never said he didn't do anything wrong. Okay. I just said he didn't hurt the kids and he didn't hurt Tammy. His, Tammy, his first wife. I never said he didn't do anything wrong. He and I have had a difference of opinion on some things in the last year. We started to, as my teenage daughter would say, drift. Um, there were some things I confronted him on last February, and he did not like that. Um, he basically cut me off. And I tried very hard to try to mend things with him. As my, uh, I was excommunicated from the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints on April 9th of 2019. Chad, in, now this is only my opinion. This is Julie Rose's opinion. This is not angels or anybody else talking. This could very well be my hurt heart talking. Chad Daybell was a jerk to me. Yeah. And I continued to try to be his friend and to help him and to warn him. And it was met with resistance. It was met with rejection. And it was met with... Um, him basically wanting nothing to do with me he has his beliefs on why he did that and I have my understandings nonetheless this is where I am and I think it's important people know when I met Chad in February 2015 we started working together and we talked every day and that was basically our relationship every couple of days while we were working on the first two books the third book I got busier because I started my relief organization in, in August of 2015. Chad and Tammy were very involved in my life. I was also making them a lot of money. And they were never in it for the money. At least I didn't think so. They always made me feel very comfortable. They were very, very kind. I never had any reason to doubt their genuineness. I watched Chad sacrifice both financially and in many ways you know um 
he was forced out of one of his jobs because the guy told him that he wouldn't print my books anymore unless he detached himself from me. Chad went to bat for me for three years, fiercely. He, he helped me um, when I had adversarial attacks and all kinds of things. He would come and listen. He didn't go to all my speaking engagements, but he went to several of them. And I sat in his living room with his children and his family. I, I went to Dairy Queen with Chad and Tammy, and I, I watched how they raised their kids. I watched how they treated each other. And Chad, by all appearances, Chad was a good husband, and he was kind to her. They'd sit on the couch and hold hands, you know. Okay. And he and he was kind to me. So let's let's pull it back to current events now. So where, where are we now? Um, okay. Y- you were, you know, you talked about him in in this last year and how th- you're describing this shift that took place in your relationship. Yes. The there's shift been a lot of in December. There's of been a lot of year. discussion um, on the media about this cult. Do you? What can you tell us about this cult? Is this real? Do you know if okay. he's part of something? So I'm going to clear this up. Preparing a people is not a cult. That's a group of people that got together that believe in Christ and they believe in end times prophecies. And I spoke at their conference one time for half an hour in 2017. And then I was told to distance myself and to do my own podcast and and to basically separate myself from that group. Chad spoke with them a lot and he did a lot of work with Mike and Nancy James. And, um, Okay, I don't know. I don't know everything they did. I didn't. To tell you the truth, I only watched two of those podcasts that Chad ever did, maybe three. Okay. Um, I'm busy. <laughs> I have my own mission. I was I was focusing on that. Okay. And Chad did his, did his thing. I did mine. Um, what I do know about them is they're not a cult, and so people are trying to wrap their group up as a cult, and that's absolutely an attack from the dark side. It's a lie. The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is not a cult. Now, they excommunicated me, and they don't like what I do, and they don't like what I say, and they don't like what I teach, and they don't like that I share my gifts, but they're not a cult. So since, since you were excommunicated, have you started your own religion or cult, if you will, whether formally or informally? started my own religion. (laughs) No, I'm not tied to any religion, any organization, any group. I am Julie Rowe. When I file my taxes, I file a Julie Rowe. And then I have the Greater Tomorrow Relief Organization. That's my organization that I run. And that's a relief organization for on, on my website. It talks about emergency and disaster relief. And quite honestly, I haven't updated my website because I also deal with human trafficking and I would rather, you know, not get into that. So um, I have I have safe houses. There are rumors on the Internet that I have the means to hide Chad Dable. I can promise you this. Um, I don't have any houses that are under my name. My organization works with individuals who own their own properties. They volunteer their property as a safe house when we need it. They stock their own supplies unless I have a surplus of money coming in as donations, and then I donate. But I don't own any properties. That lie has been going around for four years Okay. that I am taking people's properties or that my organization has these properties or that I own all these properties. I have my house. In Kansas, that is my okay. headquarters. The rest okay. of the properties, but we do have about sixty safe houses. Okay, and let's go back to this cult idea. So, preparing oh, yeah. a people is not a cult. You're not part of a cult. Do you think Chad has started a religion or a church or a cult of some kind? I, if I'm being honest, I don't know what Chad's done in the last year. Okay. I have an idea. I have my gifts. I have what I hear from the other side of the veil, and I have what I see, and I have my understandings. You can have, first you can see, so there's different gifts. You can see, you can believe, you can hear, you can understand, you can learn, you can have an opinion, you can think, and you can know. Those are just some of the gifts people can have. I have different views on all of those things. So what I see 
is that Chad Debo has been involved in some things that I don't agree with, which is also one of the reasons we uh, distanced. And I was told for his protection, but really for mine, to keep my distance, but to still reach out in friendship to try to help him. That is what I did. Um, I have seen things going on in Chad's life for a year related to Lori Vallow from a distance using my gifts. And I have not said that to Chad. But Chad knows some of my gifts. And I also believe that's one of the reasons he distanced himself is because he thinks if he distances himself, he can keep me from, you know, quote unquote, spying on him. The reality is, is with the gifts that I have, it doesn't matter where you are in the galaxy. I can see you. Uh That intimidates people. Quite frankly, it makes them not want to be my friend. I've kept that hidden my whole life. And the reality is, it's time to tell people I'm not going to hide from my gifts anymore, including Chad Daybell. And I will say to you, and I want you to listen to the verbiage carefully. I see Chad going to the beach with Lori and the kids. I see Chad on a small island in Hawaii. I hear it's Lanai, L-A-N-A-I. I see Chad won't be there much longer. I hear and see and feel and believe and understand that the FBI and the police know exactly where he is. Interesting. Which could lead to a lot of questions. Then why, I mean, if they know where he is, why don't we have more information now? I see there's a custody battle going on. I hear there's a custody battle going on. I understand there's a custody battle going on. And I understand that people care a lot about money, including the estranged family, including Lori Vallow's older son, who's making pleas to the to the family to find the... the There are a lot of family members that are involved that are coming forward and a lot of people that are pretending they, that they really care about the kids. I'm not saying they don't care. I'm just saying there's an underlying custody battle related specifically to life insurance money in the neighbor neighborhood of a couple, couple million. And I think that this is the messy part of it. And it would be really nice. I mean, why don't people just admit that? Why don't they? Why don't they say this is what's going on? So again, why? Why would the FBI? Um, why are they pulling back? Why aren't they revealing more on where he is and letting us I know things? I think some members. I think some members of the FBI. Okay, so first of all, people have to understand. Anytime there's more than one state involved, the FBI is called in. Okay. So. This doesn't even mean, oh, this is such a huge case. The FBI got called in because that's like what the FBI wants you to think. This whole fear mongering thing. Oh, the FBI is involved. No. okay. if you have a custody issue going on between states, Lori Vallow and her estranged husband that died in July, Charles Vallow, they were living in the Phoenix area, Gilbert, Arizona. Then Lori moved to after he died she moved up to Rexburg well gee Chad lives there but also she believes that's a gathering place and she was also having problems with her estranged family who was trying to get custody and they're angry that their son got shot and killed and she was in an abusive marriage Charles was abusive I see drug history and all kinds of stuff going on that were being hidden ask me how I know this it's my gifts I have no concrete evidence I've talked to no police, I've talked to no FBI, I've only talked to some media, and I've talked to no family members or friends other than you and a couple of my close friends that Chad has nothing to do with. He's cut us all off. Okay, so again, FBI is involved because it involves multiple states. Why aren't they, if they know where he is, why don't we know more? So everybody has to get to try... So this is what I do with energy, okay? When I clear people of their energy, their abuse energy, their family uh, generational stuff, right? The false beliefs and the patterns and all this. You have to get to the root cause, the root emotion, the root motive. So you have to ask how to flush out the energy, how to let the energy play out. Because karma follows you. So then you get to the root cause. What is the underlying cause or purpose or motive? Those are all different things, but they tie in 
for anyone involved in this case. What's the motive of the media? What's the motive of Lori Vallow? What's the motive of Lori Vallow's estranged family? What's Chad Daybell's motive? What's the police department's motive? What's the Rexburg Police Department um, connection? What's, what's, what has East Idaho News got, got in this, right? What's the FBI got in this? What's their motive? We would like to think that people have pure motives. And what I see here is every single one of these people I just named has a form of impure motive involved. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No one has clean hands and it's messy. And when I look at the energy, it's like this convoluted, nasty energy ball that's so gross, so gross. And where do you start to unravel it? And my angels asked me to use my gifts and just say, this is, this is what it is. Now, people can say, oh, she's crazy. She says, you know, she talks about her angels. I'm using the exact same verbiage that Joan of Arc used that got her burned at the stake, and I'm doing it on purpose. All right, Julie, I want to go back to this cult idea. Some, some of the things the media has reported that Lori said to her brother, I think, Charles or whoever. Um, Lori's do, husband is Charles in the divorce decree papers okay. or something that he claimed. Yeah, yeah, there there were some things that were said that were religious sounding, cultish sounding. I, they I do honestly, sound really weird. They sound weird. They sound strange. Do you have anything to say about that? It almost sounds like maybe yeah. she started something or what do you see? Yes, it does sound like she and Chad are involved in something. And it sounds, okay, this is, this is the honest to goodness truth. I thought it sounds cultish and weird and or slash like she has some serious mental problems. And I, I can see abuse energy in her. I know she's been abused. And so um, I, it, it's messy, right? And I don't know where that vulnerability came in. I, I, let me try to correct the energy the best I can. And I hope, I hope that she, I know she's going to watch this and I need her and Chad to hear me loud and clear. She was not sealed to Moroni and she is not a God. She has not been a God. There are quote unquote archangels that have condescended to the planet and are living in reincarnated states. They are on the planet. We do have translated beings on this planet, and we also have shapeshifters. Lori Fallow is not one of them. So she's got dark spirits talking to her, telling her stuff. I don't, I don't know what's going on there other than it's not correct. You're sensing the convoluted nature of this. You feel the darkness. The word is, the... The word is gross. That's the word that comes to me. It's okay. gross. It's, it's gross. And I could tell you how I see I could see the actual demons involved. I, I mean, her fear of sounding crazy, right? What do I have to fear? People already think I'm crazy, Eric. So, right. <laughs> I see Lucifer's hand in this. That's who I see. Okay. Lucifer himself is orchestrating this crazy, messed up ball of energy. Okay. Well, there it is. I, uh, I don't have any other prepared questions. I feel like we've covered a bulk of, uh, of what was necessary for this, but do you have any final thoughts, things that you'd like to get out or clear? Yeah. I want to leave the, the, I don't know, the audience or whoever's listening to this with some hope. And this is, this is the hope I give you. Okay. The kids are safe for now. I can't guarantee you what Lori and Chad will do with those kids once they hear my view or once they know they're outed or once they get more desperate if, you know, they feel like the cops are going to really come after them. This I know. The police know where they are. The FBI know where they are. I think Chad and Lori know they know where they are and they're reassured through their attorney that things are going to be fine. That. Maybe Lori and Chad don't know the cops know where they are, but Chad does have some gifts. I don't know the extent. I was told last February, and I have witnesses to it, that based on some of Chad's experiences and his decisions at that point in time, he was no longer going to get pure revelation from the light side like he had been because he had crossed some boundaries and had not, um, what's the word for it? Um, let me just leave it at that. He he was not 
I was told very clearly he was not going to get clear answers and that I basically shouldn't listen to anything Chad Dable said. Okay. And, um, and that I should, like I always have, take everything to the Lord. Now, I have only talked to Chad. I, need, I think it's very clear. People need to know. I talked to Chad in March. I think it was March 10th or 11th when I was threatened with excommunication. And my angels told me to quit publishing my books, that my relationship with Chad was to end. And he, he gave me my book rights back that week. And then a week later, he sent me an, I got an email on it. And a week later, he sent me an email and he said he and Tammy had talked and that they basically said I could, um, you know, give them X number of dollars uh, to pay for the books that were still printed. At one point in time, he tried to get me to buy more than $13,000 worth of books because he knew I was making money in my energy classes. Uh And we got in a fight over text message and I said, the Lord is telling me no on that. I don't have $13,000. And if I did, I wouldn't give it to you for books that you, you published as a publisher. You're the publisher. I'm the author. You're the one that chose to, to, to publish those books at that capacity. Okay. And he got hurt and he got angry. That was, I think, like in, that was sometime in the spring. Uh, he still didn't respond to me. Mm-hmm. Yes. He still didn't respond to me. When I would try to text him and I still continued to sell those books at my classes. I just had somebody else who would go pick them up from his house, but I had no contact. I finally wrote him a handwritten letter in the mail. And that is what got him to call me on the phone three weeks before Tammy died. Okay, Julie. All right. Where should we go from here? Other thoughts? I'm going to go back. I'm going to go back. I, I think I just, I needed to clear that. I needed it said. Okay. I, this is my perspective. Chad has his. I'm just telling you where I've been. I have not trusted Chad. Trusted Chad. I have not trusted Chad for a year. I used to trust him. I still want to trust him, but this I know. Tammy's happy. She's in a good place. Charlos Ballo is every time I see him, he's in a dark place. He's sitting, he likes to sit in the corner of this room on this wooden chair with his hands in his face, like his head down. And um, he's struggling. And he's beating himself up is kind of the energy, you know. Um, And I see the kids laughing, joking around. They're playing cards. They're playing games. They're watching TV. And they're going to the beach. Okay. That was as of yesterday today is thursday what's today's date thursday the ninth ninth that was as of wednesday the ninth i still saw them actually wednesday the eighth wednesday the eighth sorry today's thursday the ninth by the time this comes out i don't know when we'll get it out sometime in the next couple of days um i want to throw this out there the the fbi and the police department know that i've come forward as a friend and and they they, they put on the media, you know, call 911 or contact us if you have any leads. And they have these hot tips and everything that they put all over. And I'm not saying I want the FBI and the police to call me because I really don't. They can get what they need off of these videos. But I do find it strange and questionable as to why they are not following every single lead they have if they actually had a case. Very interesting. Mm-hmm. Or if there was not something else behind the scenes going on, they are not forthright, and they are not—they are not being honest in their um, representation. And either is the media, because I can tell you that I did a 40-minute interview with Fox 13, and you guys saw what they put on the video. If you haven't seen it, go to fox13.com. That was a 40-minute interview, and you saw what they took from it. So clearly, again, agendas. All these departments, yes. family members, individuals have their own agendas in this. Yes. And I and I talked to KSL, and you saw the job they did there on what I told them, and that was a 30-minute phone call. Okay. And I texted both of those media outlets afterwards and gave them more information, and they ignored me except for KSL. And KSL said, when I said in a text message to them, I want to help with the case any way I can. I want to help resolve this case. They said, they said, so are you saying, you know, for sure where Chad Daybell is? And I said, no, I do not. And they didn't respond to me again. 
if they had half a brain, they would have asked me some questions. I would have been willing to talk. But I was fleshing out the energy and the motive. Okay. They all have impure motive. But the kids are safe, and Tammy's in a good place. Okay. Um, is that your final word? Do you want to... Should we wrap it up here? Well, there's all these rumors. I would like to ask people to quit judging. First of all... Um, I mean, I, I haven't read it, but I've had other people send me stuff and my husband gets on and reads all this stuff on these online forums. And I'm like, you know what? Some people really suck. Okay. <laughs> because you guys spend all day long gossiping and judging and, and making up all these stories. They've got this sleuth something my husband's told me about where they, they spend like practically all day long trying to crack the case. And it's all based on stupid lies and rumors and fabrications of things they have no idea what they're talking about right. yes go out and do something with your life quit wasting your time gossiping about other people and watching lies in the media it's just it just drives me crazy i can't <laughs> right so yeah well we hope the truth comes out from media outlets uh, um i don't know that we're gonna get the full truth from them but hopefully the lawmakers, the attorneys, those that are involved um, from the legal side can get us clear answers soon. And until then, I'm inclined to just let the judgment go. And, uh, okay. just, you know, but thank you for your well, people are going to say that and they're going to say, well, Julie made her judgment. You better believe I did. I'm discerning, which is different than judging. OK, fair enough. You're using your gifts. So I want to say this. I want to say this, Eric. And this is me putting putting myself out there. I have nothing to gain, nothing to gain, but a lot to lose in my reputation, putting my reputation on the line for Chad or anybody else. But this I will say, if there are media outlets that want to talk to me, I will talk to the main ones. I have already had a bunch of them contact me. And if I can sense that you guys really want to do a legit story that's not going to convolute my words, I will be happy to work with you. But it has to come from an authentic place. Okay. We'll leave it there. Julie, thanks for your time today. Thanks to all those who have tuned in. Um, I hope in future episodes to get into some politics and other issues, current events with mm. uh, the Trump administration and other world events. So we hope you'll join us here soon. Thanks for joining us. Okay. One more thing, Eric. <laughs> yes. This, this is not going away soon. We're going to see this into February, right. maybe into the spring. And then we have other big things coming in the spring, you guys. So if you have not paid attention to what's going on in our world, I suggest you wake up. Okay. Julie, I'm going to let you say goodbye so I know we're really done. <laughs> goodbye, everyone. I love you. And there it is. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs>